Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Code Save Academy YouTube channel, uh, and welcome to our first ever uh, live CDA setup session, uh, where you, as viewers, will get an insight to how our setup process goes on in the background. Um, so, without further ado, let me give an introduction to what we're doing here today. We are at uh, the Barber Motorsports Park with the Audi RS3 uh, TCR car. Uh, my name is Saida Ramesh. I'll be the engineer today. Hello everyone, I'm Quarantine Guinness and I'm the driver for Coach Dave Academy and today I'm going to drive uh, the RS3 LMS around Barber with um, Sayrut for the setup. Awesome, so on that note, let's jump straight into the session. Okay, um, so I've shared the first baseline and the should be in shared setups. Yep, I'm ready to go. Okay, let's go. Yeah, let me just check that. Uh, not sure how to change that setting though. Once we're in sim, let me just see. Printing just double checking. Um, fuel level should be 80, 80 liters, right? 80 percent. Uh, I think so. Yeah, uh, it seems fine.
Okay, so it's not bad to be honest. Um, just have two or three issues. Um, the first one is that it's too harsh over the curbs. Um, especially it's uh, when you go downhill over the on the brake with the the big white curbs. Uh, and then after the chicane, when I go over the white curb, when I exit the chicane, the kind of chicane which is flat actually, it's really bouncy um, after the the curb. Uh, and then it's a bit loose over the brakes on on the brakes, but I think it's just with brake bias. Okay. So I just need to put some um, brake on the, on the front. Right. So you're saying the uh, which part of the car are you feeling unsettling more? The rear end on the curbs or the front? Uh, I think it's the front. In the replay, but I think it's the front. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, it's we'll the front mainly. It's the front, right? Okay. Uh, so I think what we'll try to do is just stiffen up the rear end, but then we'll drop the rear ride height just so that it's more stable under braking. And we'll soften the front uh, spring just to get some mechanical grip. Sounds good. I've shared that as a new setup if you want to try it out. Yeah, I'm seeing it in the replay. I think it's the front that's bottoming out when you're hitting the curbs. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's just raising the front as well. But I'm softening the front spring just so that you get some more compliance over the curbs. It's already better on the braking. And I kept the yeah. same brake bias, so yeah. problem is solved. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to try V1? I've made a few changes to the suspension just to test it out. Sorry? Uh, I've shared a new setup if you want to try that out. It's just with it's a new one point Oh, a new one. It's 1.1 one uh, one setup or new one? No, no, it's a new one. 1.1 no, one okay. one was the, with the baseline. So okay. I'll, I'll send you the new one. So this would be uh, the second one I've shared, uh, underscore V1. Got it.
the return the theory when I go back on shuttle. Okay, that's most probably because of the soft front spring, so you the arrow shifting rearwards. Um, how about in the slow speed mid corner? How does it feel? It's it's okay. Um, yeah, it's mainly the slow corners where it's on the steering. Um, okay, all right. Like on the exit of the airplane, it's really, really on the steering. All right. Mm -hmm. With the Elantra, it was much more easier to exit of the of the corner. Um. Okay. So is this uh, more under steering than uh, the previous setup that you started with? Nah, it's quite the same. Same. All right. And the curb problem is solved now, yeah? Sorry? Uh, the curb problem with the... Yeah, it's it's slightly better, but I think it's still bottoming, but I don't I don't know if we can... Yeah. ...finish that. Okay, if it's still bottoming, then I think... Uh, we'll keep the same front ride height that we pushed it to. That I'll go up on the front spring, so it doesn't move as much. Uh, that should also solve your understeer. Also, how are you liking the uh, direction change right now, the response of the car on the front end? It's not good, to be honest. Okay. That's a good rotation, so it's it's nice. I don't have to put like Giga steering angle to make it turn. All right, cool. It still feels a bit bouncy. In the chicane where it's flat out, it's it's okay because you are not under braking or something like that. But when I when I'm coming on the I don't know which corner it is, but it's when you go down the hill and I have to brake. When I'm on the brakes over the curb, it's really bouncy. And it's really it's really tricky. Okay, right. Okay, this this time, I think it's the rear, which is a bit too bouncy, uh, especially it could be turn six. On the rear, okay. Yeah. Uh, right. I'm gonna go one more click up on the front ride height and then the rear as well. I think we go up. Um, I'll go up on the damping as well. 
And I think for your mid corner understeer, let's try a softer front arb. See if that solves it. Yeah, that's V2. Thanks. Ah, uh, it's loose on the on the curb. Okay. Mm -hmm. It seems to have a lot more rotation though in general, right? Yeah. Are you comfortable with that level of rotation everywhere else, or is it? Ah, uh, it's. No. It might be a bit too much uh, on the airpin. All right, and then that the understeer is completely gone now, right? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, then it's just about managing the the throttle when you accelerate again. Okay. Of course, if you go flat out when you exit, you're gonna have the stairs, so. But it's fine now. Yeah, from the. Seeing your car from rear chase, in the front is almost hitting the, the curb. You can't quite tell. Yeah. Are you are you feeling it when, when you're hitting the curbs? Is are it we? bottoming out? Are you feeling the front bottoming out when you hit the curbs? Yeah, I mean, the, the, it's mainly in the chicane. All but right. yeah, the, the rear is un unstable uh, over the first curb.
Okay. So yeah, the end of the series is gone now. Um, but yeah, the main issue I, is that I think it's just a bit bouncy still. And uh, yeah, it's bottoming. The front is bottoming the in the chicane. Yep. All right. Okay, let's try uh, V3 then. So I went one more click up on the front right height. Um, and then for the rear, we've softened the rear spring. Um, and also dropped the rear right height just one click so that uh, you're not unstable under braking. Um, let's see. I, I suspect this is going to cause some understeer, but I, I know what we can do after that to solve it. I'm mainly just trying to solve the rear issue because once that's fixed for the most part then uh, I think a simple toe change should help with the front. Yeah, I don't know. Feels feels a bit too under feels in the steering now for some reason. Yep, yep. How does the rear feel on these curbs? Uh it's a bit better. Yep. But I'm trying to be a bit less greedy on the on the entry of the the corner of kind of downhill. Yeah, okay. Like this the next time one. So try it on this lap, try to take it a bit more aggressively. So if it's stable, then we know that that issue is solved. Well, okay, this time. Okay, yeah. I can see on the chase cam, it's just about holding on. Um,
It was a bit under serious this time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. So, you're not feeling the front or uh, bottom anymore, right? Because I can't see it on the replay. It's not happening. Uh, I mean, I can, I can hear that it's bottoming, but there is no, like, mm -hmm. bad effect on the, on the, the handling of the car. Okay. As like, long you as can, it's stable. Yep. Yeah, you can go through the curbs like, like the Hyundai. Like, it's, it's completely fine. It's not gonna throw you out of the track or something like that. Wait, that's a good thing because generally the Audi is a bit more unstable on the curves, I think. So if if it feels like the Hyundai now, that's a good thing. Um, so now I think what we can do is just... Uh, I'm going more aggressive on the rear toe. That's V4 that I've shared. So hopefully that's going to give you... Um, I mean, it's going to take away a bit more grip from the rear end. And when you get on throttle, so hopefully uh, your front will have more grip. Rather, it'll be more balanced. Yeah, I can see it clipping a bit over there.
Uh, it's a shame that it's not really consistent on over the curb um, still mm -hmm. um, yep. when you go downhill because that's a nice lap. Yeah, I can... still feels like a bit like not consistent over the curb, um, but it's mainly on this part of the track because, like I said, in the chicane it's completely fine. So okay, yep. But um, yeah, you the... definitely have to not be too greedy on the first one because then the rear is like not under control. Right. Okay. Um, uh, the the balance definitely looks a lot better. That's what I feel yeah. looking at the car. And so it's only the curb right now, right? That's the issue. Like the rest yeah. of the track feels all right. Okay. I basically lost uh, pace wise. I lost like two tenths in the in this part of the track, and I gained or was the same on the others. Okay, right. So I think now it's just about tuning the dampers up. You said it's both the front and the rear, right? It's inconsistent as to which one is losing grip on the curbs. Uh, I think it's... Yeah, it seems to be the front sometimes. I mean, the first on the first curb, it's the rear, which is loose. But then when I take the second one, it's the front. Okay, let's try V5 then. I just gone up on all the dampers. Because I think uh, so. What ultimately we've done to the car is it's it's a lot softer now compared to the um, the first setup we started with. Um, so it's definitely better on the curbs, but then the the dampers are not. Are, are basically, you know, the car is moving too much as it bounces off the curbs. I can see it mainly in the front because it's it's almost hitting the ground, but it's not quite. Um, but yeah, yeah. That's hopefully this should work. What are your uh, first impressions on the curb? Uh, it's nice, but yeah, I wanted to say that it was really nice, but I think it's too soon. Okay, right.
and it's really good. Like if we can find that kind of issue, I mean, I still have the issue uh, on the second white curve. Like it's it just stand the car on the right. So time I'm, it's completely wrong for the for the exit. I'm too inside, so I have to go over the curb and. I'm just losing all the time. Okay. Yep. Does that mean exactly where it is the next time you go go past yeah. that section? One. It yes. felt okay this time, but yeah, it's just not consistent. Okay. Yep. It's the right hander, right? When you first clip it. In the chicane. Sorry. Um, which part of the chicane is it uh, where you usually have the issue? Because it looked good in this lap. Uh, it's like the, the second curve, and second. at the end of the second one, like this one, just sends the car on the inside. It's tough to explain, but like it should like stay. The car should stay straight, and for some reason, it's going on the front. It's like if the car turned by herself on the right. Okay, so the rear is kicking out rear. Uh, I don't know. It it feels more like it's the front. Okay, right. Okay, I think I know how to solve this. One last question on that: with the stiffer dampers, are you were you finding the car more violent on the curb, or it's just like more easy? Oh, to it's nice. It. It's okay. fine. It's completely fine, to be honest. Okay, because it looks like it's more violent on entry, but then the mid corner it catches. Uh, okay, so if it's fine now, then I'll just stiffen up the front compression. That should probably fix it. Yeah. It definitely fix it, I think. But yeah, the balance is really good. Like, if we find the problem on that curb, it's really good. Yeah, that's V6. I've shared it. Oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a damper issue because, like, the, the it's not it's not bottoming out for sure. Um, your balance overall is the same. I mean, it, it it's good throughout the track. I just feel like if we can change the the rate at which the front settles, as if it settles it quicker, then it's just gonna solve the issue.
Ah, it's fine. Ah, it's really good now. Awesome. Good to hear that. And I can see it's not understeering on the exit of that either. That was a an issue before, I think. It looked like. Um, Ah, very nice. I improved the the lab. That's very nice. Yeah, looking good. Yep. I think I'm gonna try again to see it's, if it's still consistent, like two extra laps. But yeah, it feels really good. Uh, that's three timed lap, so yeah, it's. I it's guess it's fine now. Yep. Yeah.
Yeah, very nice. Yeah, looks good. They will take the Even first three. On the the first curb on the right corner, it feels good. Like it can be greedy, and it still feels really stable. So yeah, very good. Perfect. Awesome. So let's save this then. Um, what is the tire wear looking like on the four four tires? Uh, you mean tire wear? Tire wear. Yep. Uh, it looks okay. Uh, wait. Yeah, it seems fine. Seven percent of the six laps. Okay, that's good. As long as it's even. Uh, yeah, that's good. We'll take this. So this is with the latest setup, yeah? V6? Yeah, V6. Cool. I'm gonna save the replay of the the fastest club. Mm -hmm. Yep. I just need to check the uh, telemetry after that uh, for the fuel consumption. Um, do you want me to send you my telemetry files? Yeah, just to double check the fuel cone. Where... Need to leave the session. Yeah. Otherwise, um, otherwise, we'll test it now. It's fine. I think it'll be around 1.5, 1.6 maybe. Actually, yeah, it's better to leave the session because then you can uh, send me the O lap and B lap because that's going to become a new I mean that's gonna get refreshed when you do the quality run so if we just put all those like in a zip file and then you can send it at the end or Okay, I got everything. I'm gonna join again. Awesome. I'll just start off with six liters. I think it should be enough. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so if you can just tell me after one lap how much is consumed, then I'll correct it.
yeah, let me know when you're back in. I can share the quality. Hey, hey, I'm on the session. Okay. Yeah, that's a uh, QV1. Okay. I sent you the link for the, all the files, uh, like replay lab, uh, lab files and telemetry. Awesome, man. Thanks. I'll download that. Uh, it's you on the right? Yep. Uh, yes. V1, yep. Mm -hmm. Just went to click on the rear for now, for the right height. We see how it uh, out affects it. I have, let's say, it's 1.060 uh, for the for the fuel. 1.6. Okay, so we'll need uh, either five or six. six. Yeah, it says I have 3.76 lit. Uh, uh, yeah, laps of fuel. Okay. Yep. That's that's fine because then you have one out lap, two flying laps, and yep. Just so we're not on the edge. Here, my lap, my lap times. Better.
Well, that's decent. I think it can be a bit better. Like, setup time, not the setup. The setup is very nice. Again. Okay. So it's it's not rotating too much, yeah? Because yeah, no, it's I, perfect. Like okay. balance is really good. All right. Mm -hmm. Just need to be a bit careful at the air pin on the braking because if you brake just a bit too strong, the car wants to not spin, but she wants to rotate like too much. Mm -hmm. But it's fine. I mean, we can solve that if we go up on the rear spring one click just to prevent it from lifting. Um, if you want, we can try that. And it really depends. Is it like, uh, is it very easy to spin it under braking? No, no, no. No, right? Okay. Then it's fine.
gonna try one one more time. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I can get the uh, go below twenty nine for sure. Yeah, visibly I can't see anything wrong with the car right now. Maybe a bit of understeer, but a li little bit more um, than the race. Well, unless it's fine, it feels quite the same with the race setup. I don't see any anything different. Okay, that's good then. Yep. Yeah, then I'll just save this. Yeah, just uh, double check to confirm how much. Actually, no, wait, I'll, I'll check it. Okay. For quality, I'm using 1.59 of fuel, so the difference yeah, is but really small. I need 4.8. I've just put 6 liters just so that it's. No. Yep. And that, that way you can push on your outlap as well to get the tires up. mistake
Ah, very nice. Yeah, so good. I got in the 28s, that's good. Nah, it feels really good, like... The balance is really good. It rotates when you need. Really good over the curb. Feels stable, so yeah, that's perfect. Awesome, cool. I've saved that as the final quality set. Um, all the other files are ready. Uh, I'm gonna take them, just gonna get the replay, and then I'm gonna have to leave the session to telemetry. Yeah, cool, yeah. Okay, I showed you all the files um, of the quality setup. Awesome, dude. Thanks. Okay, so I guess that's the end of the quality setup as well. So basically, that's a wrap of the Audi TCR around Barber Motorsport Park. Um, Thank you all for joining. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, Alex, Mehta, do they have uh, a type of setup they aim for oversteer, understeer, or is it just up to the drivers for a specific uh, track or car? Um, quarantine, you want to go go ahead for that with that one? Um, I think it's. We mainly need something consistent. Um, I mean, of course, sometimes it depends on the drivers. Some people prefer oversteer, others prefer in the steer. But I think we we try to to find the best compromise. Um, for example, this time it was a bit oversteery, but it wasn't like giga oversteer, so it felt really fine and stable. So yeah, it depends on some track. 
on some tracks it's fine to have a bit of understeer, but uh, this time I think oversteer is quite interesting on that one. It fits the track a bit more. So yeah, I would say sometimes it depends on the track, but yeah, the best compromise is something between oversteer and understeer, something really stable. Cool. And uh, second question, uh, do your teams have certain cars or tracks they basically specialize in, or is it more of a team is given a car or track to work on? Um, it, it really depends. Like We, we do work on specific series uh, with multiple cars within that series uh, for the most part. But all in all, it's, it's quite a good mix. So you, know, you get different types of driving styles for different car and track combinations. So effectively on average it's it's well distributed um so like how quarantine said for the previous question it, what you essentially get is something that uh, for a specific track in a car you'll get some a, a setup that's well suited for those specific parts of the track some tracks do require a bit more oversteer and that's why the balance of the car is slightly different but uh all in all when you look at all the cars and tracks across the board you get um very very easy to access easily usable setups um but but nonetheless fast so it's it's a good balance across all the teams awesome so um on that note thank you all for joining us today uh this was uh quite a quite special to you know uh, we hope that this was insightful for you all everyone who's, who's watching our stream thank you so much for joining us um so this was the audi tcr at uh, barber motorsport park uh, make sure to tune in make sure to tune in next week for um, another setup session um yeah stay tuned uh, follow the uh, uh, the announcements on discord and you'll get an update on what the next car is soon um that's all from my side quarantine any final words yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the, the session. Uh, I enjoyed it. So yeah, uh, see you next time. And uh, yeah, have a good week, guys.